Hello friends, welcome to the SAN7, SAN12. You saw the review, now let's do the build. The build is done. Yeah, actually, I just didn't think there was any point uh, covering the construction. The construction is so straightforward on this model and um, there's so few parts, it makes it a really enjoyable build. So I'll just show you where we are at the moment. As you can see, it's been built up. I've built up both, both uh, the missiles and everything is, as usual, sort of dry fit. So we've got the base there, and we've got the two support arms. And then also the missile, I've just made a slight mod. I've added um, these mini magnets, just one in here and one in here. Unfortunately, I haven't got one for the other missile, but that just allows me to fit the missile in dry like so.
welcome back. Okay, the only thing that's missing from that montage, should have sort of shown it to you, was that we just did a bit of shading. We took that gray shade, added in a bit of this color sky, and um, subtle bit of shading. So what's the idea here? We've already got the hairspray underneath, and we wanted to depict a bit of wear, but obviously we wanted to display it with a missile. So if we want to go for credibility, we wanted to depict just less is more type effects, a few scratches. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, so this is the only piece that hasn't got the hairspray on. I'm not going to do any weathering at all. Let's start off this base piece as well. Um, I wish I had chipping fluid. Chipping fluid would be much better for this. But as usual, we'll just wet this surface off. I had to put quite a lot of hairspray on. Just try and hit the edges first. Because I've used the Tamiya paint, we aren't going to get very big chunks coming off, which is a good thing, in my opinion. The paint's starting to soften now. Take your time with the hairspray chipping, I think that's the key to it, and only work in very small areas at a time. I think we'll do this bottom plate here as well, like the bolts on it at least. Get those. Toothpicks, pretty good for scratches. I'm trying to get all the edges now. I'm just trying to get this edge here. big piece came off there. Head, head chipping is random of course just by its nature we just don't know exactly what's going to come off which is sometimes good and sometimes not. Let's get these bolts as well those will be a good uh, eye catcher I think. So let's work on them let's scratch them a bit See the hairspray here is starting to bubble and the bubbles don't look good. That'll do for that section. Let's hit this plate here just because and these bolts. Try and get the edge going up. There she goes. That is nice. That is a nice subtle. as if it's just been worn away by movement on top of the deck. Let's keep going with that. Just work this plate. And get these bolts. And also I just want to get this edge as well. There we are, that's just about as far as I want to take that. Just enough to give it that wear. Let's start on the other parts now. Okay, this is the part that holds the actual missile. I just want to put very, very light wear on this bit, like as if, I don't know, just like it's just had some exposure, but very, very subtle. I don't want this bit looking really, I don't want the thing looking rusty. I want it as if maybe it's on a vessel that's been on a long cruise but the obviously the uh, weapon system is still fully functional so we'll just work this we're just going to get some edge scratches just real subtle be careful the thing to be careful of here is I had to put on quite a lot of hairspray and once it starts to go it goes very quickly that is the situation with hairspray. Must admit, hairspray technique, 
I like it for environmental effects, but for rust and scratches, it really is tricky, I think, to get right. Sponge technique is just easier, and it's just more controlled, obviously, because wherever you put the sponge, you get your effects. With this, it's a bit hit and miss. Chipping fluids are much better as well than actual hairspray. I would agree. I would agree on. But unfortunately, I just don't have any. Okay, anywhere else on here? Let's get the back. Just a touches. Just a few touches. It's best off if you're gonna. You keep it random, but also it is deliberate because obviously if you've got some surface wear on here is it going to be just confined to one face it's not it's going to be all exposed areas where the weather would get to it it's okay get underneath here underneath pst, no point the missiles there Had to use Tamiya paint as well. If I use the Vallejo stuff, we'd be seeing big chunks of paint getting ripped off. And um, yeah, okay, that's all right for certain subjects, but definitely not for this. Unless I was to show it like, you know, totally, um, you know, absolutely wrecked sort of state. Let's use that. Now, once we start, once we've got the microchips, go back in with the brush. You've got the penetration down underneath the hairspray. And again, back to the brush. Let's get that going a bit. There. Okay, let's do some more bits. Okay, for these, um, this is going to be very obvious, but the areas I want to hit are the handrails and the floor plates but it's extremely delicate as, you know, the construction of the plastic is extremely delicate. So we need to be pretty careful. We don't want the thing getting damaged during the chipping process. Let's just get that going. Let's go straight in with some microchips as soon as it's moist. I think this is gonna be the way to do all this. Well, it takes quite a while, but this is basically what I've got so far on one of the support arms. So I may as well do the second one and I'll just show you some of the process. Okay, here's the second one. Not too dissimilar. We want to keep them tuned. That I do not like, and that is what we going to take care of. Okay, so basically my chipping's done. And now it's time for some detail painting. Let's get into that now. Okay, so this isn't exactly the most exciting subject. It is to me though, I quite enjoy it. But um, we want to add areas of visual interest. Unfortunately, with are very limited references, we have got some detail painting to do. So let's just get straight onto that right now. Okay, detail painting done, chipping done. I'm gonna keep it real basic again. Uh, raw umber, oil wash on the entire, basically, launch amount. I don't even know what you call it. And actually this time I'm gonna use some enamel thinners because that will speed up the drying time. And I am behind schedule as always. 
So let's make up a wash. I think that should do. Mix this together. See if it flows. You get big clumps of oil when they drop on the model. They really create some uh, deep color. So let's actually just start something really easy. Let's just go on the base. I need to catch up, so that's why I need to find ways to quicken up my modeling. I want that everywhere. I want that especially in these detail areas. As always, as you can see, that massively darkens the entire appearance of that part. Push that to one side for a bit. I need to let that just dry off a little bit. Actually, I need to turn it around and make sure I've got that everywhere. Yes, he does. And let's continue with these. These are tricky because they're actually, it was quite difficult to paint some of the parts because the ladder was, um, stops you getting behind the part to paint it. You start at the top, let the oil drop down. And also I need to make sure I get all this hand railing, especially all the hand railing so I get some depth into there. Try and avoid tide marks. Try and avoid pooling of the oil. But I am going quick. Need to catch up. I think I've been fairly lucky on this one. Usually, you end up with some situations where with photo etch, you chip it too much and then you chip through the brass part. But I've been lucky this time. It says so far. That is nicely darkening up now, getting the look we want. And now this part. This has got some nice depth to it, this part. With all these little handles on again. Uh, quite tricky to um, weather and you know using these methods where you have to scrub away at stuff or you just know that you're gonna basically break off pieces so as usual you've got a generous application on there but it is dilute so let's let that one rest and do this final part of the launching cradle support I don't know what it's called grey thing very difficult to find references for this as well as I found out um, yeah just isn't that many close up photographs of these launchers and I found out actually that the Chinese Navy have got a version that they obviously have some license with the Russians to have the same launcher on their naval ships. And I found something similar, but it didn't look as good as that one photo that I've used for my references. I need to make sure I hit that handrail. Or else it will look strange as heck. Make sure you get it everywhere. Now, because it's awkward shape as well, it's particularly difficult to clean up the wash. So where I can, I use my rag once this is dried. And I'm thinking now, should I hit this base as well? Is it gonna look weird? Is it gonna look, I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's hit the base as well. Come on, let's just 
give it that tinge of colour. We don't really know where it is. I suppose I really could have painted this an entirely separate colour, but I didn't. I didn't add any wear effects on it because I considered it to be the base. And then the bit that sort of drops in that circle, I, I, I consider that like part of the launcher, so that's why that got weathered more than this. Let's just put it that way. Right, okay, let's just let these dry off and then start cleaning all up again. Okay, yeah, so the clean up, because it's all delicate, you sort of dab on. And it's best off to use a rag instead of a tissue because the tissue tears and it just clings to all the um, details and then you end up ripping them off. And try and drag downwards and that's the way you're going to get your streaks. But this is a bit awkward. But you can see straight away we've got some depth there. It's starting to look good. And then similarly on these parts as well, just dab your rag on just to remove the extra wash. And if you've got one of these fan brushes, you can start to pull downwards and then you start to get your subtle streaking effects, which is all we need. We don't need big obvious streaks on this just want a suggestion of wear and tear as we said and just do a bit on this as well so this needs to dry off the only thing basically what you want to do is you just want to avoid like puddles as it just looks a little bit rough but um, I find with these anything that's got all recessed like details like this where it's a little bit awkward to get them this sort of overall wash technique is like my approach to it generally it just is easy and reasonably quick especially for somebody struggling to make videos like myself so I need that to dry off some more and I'll catch up and show you what it looks like in a second. So here we are, the uh, oils are dried up. You see, a bit of a satin sheen to them. I'm gonna leave them like that. I quite like that appearance. Now, could I go in with some more weathering? Yeah, I could, I could do all raw streaks, could do all sorts, but um, you know what? I think that's all we need on this particular model. Now there's one little final touch I wanna do. I'm gonna add some, uh, my 19, 80s or 90s vintage um, aircraft stencils. I'm just going to add a little bit on that plate there and maybe somewhere else and I'll just finish it all off. Okay. Basically, for final assembly, I don't think we even need glue. Everything seems to dry fit pretty easily all together. So, simply these launch arms. I've already put this on. This fits on just like a tank does into a turret. And then, how does this go around? I think it's like so. Nope, the other way. Onto the base. That fits close enough for me. And then we'll strap a missile underneath and we're done. So let's, uh, let's do a wrap up and talk about this model. Here we are looking at, this is the SAN7 configuration. I like this configuration, the green missile contrasting with that gray launcher. So uh, what did I think of the kit? Like really straightforward, nice, easy build. A bit of a break from what I've been doing recently, which have been quite complex. And uh, for some reason, I want to do something similar in the future. Um, I've always wanted to do one of those uh, close-in um, Gatling gun type weapons. I know RPG models do one. Also, we'll see what's next from Trumpeteer. The kit itself, well, it's like a weekend build, basically. There's so few parts. 
but there's enough detail in there, particularly the photo etch, etc., that you can get yourself a you know a really nice little project out of it, and uh, certainly looks different on the uh, on the display shelf. Now, of course, if you remember right at the start, this missile has got the magnetic holder in. The other one, I'm gonna have to jury rig it, so I'll show you that now. And here we are with the SAN12 missile attached with the magic of Patafix. Yeah, that's my only critique of this model. I think um, TACOM, if they just done some polycaps or something to make the missiles interchangeable, that would have been the icing on the cake for this kit. But as it is, um, yeah, really impressive. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Anyways, this is the bear, and I am out of here.